Porsche 911s are easy to love, aren't they? You've got the GT3, brilliant. Turbo S, sensational. But if you ask me which 911 is my favorite, I'd have to say it's the Targa. And this is why. Come on, I do love a Targa. It's like driving a Transformer, isn't it? That is the coolest roof mechanism in the game by far. And I know we've all seen Targas before, but what you might not have seen before is this Heritage Design Edition. It's a limited run series of 992 examples, with that number representing the code name of this generation of 911s. This car is the first of several Heritage Editions from Porsche, all of which will celebrate different periods in the company's history, with this particular model being a reminder of Porsche's sports cars from the 50s and 60s. It's a great idea in principle. The problem is the cost. This thing will set you back 137,000 pounds, 27 grand more than the standard Targa. So what do you get for your money? Basically, it's a normal Targa 4S that's been enhanced slightly. It's available in a bunch of different paint finishes, including black, GT metallic silver, chalk, guards red, and this, cherry red. And it has a few interesting design touches scattered all around the car, starting with, at the back, this Porsche Heritage badge. Interesting story about this. Well, not that interesting. This was first applied to the Porsche 356. That's the one that looks like a proper Beetle whenever they achieved over 100,000 kilometers as a kind of mark of quality. It's not the best quality in the world. It's a bit plasticky, but I'll tell you what I do like, this delicious gold Porsche lettering at the back and that lovely Targa 4S logo, which looks absolutely mint. Along the side, you've got 21 inch Fuchs inspired wheels, 20s at the front. Again, gold Targa lettering at the side over this silver Targa hoop. And at the very front, a unique Porsche badge, which first appeared on the 1963 version of the 911. What else is there? Oh yeah, stickers. Lots and lots of stickers. Maybe too many stickers. These on the front wings are supposed to be reminiscent of Porsche's early sports cars. And this door decal can be customized with any number you want and is supposed to be racy. Now, I don't know about you guys, but the only time I want stickers on my car is if I'm building it with Lego. In terms of value and, well, the sheer silliness of the stickers, I should probably hate this car. But I mean, just look at it. Look at the roof. Yeah, I do love a Targa. So what's it like inside a Porsche 911 Targa 4S Heritage Design Edition? Is that the longest name for any Porsche ever? I think it might be a new record. Well, actually, it's quite nice. You might have noticed it's got a two-tone interior. It comes in either black and beige or red and beige, or to give it its proper title, Bordeaux red leather and Atacama beige. It looks great. I know it looks like there's quite a lot going on in here and it does take a little while to get used to, but honestly, I'm all over it. I dig it. I'm also a big fan of the seats inside this car. They're part leather with the Porsche crest on the headrest, but also part corduroy. Now, I know a lot of you probably don't know what corduroy is. I actually told my cameraman, look, it's made of corduroy. And he was like, what is that? He's like 20 years old. He's got no idea. But basically, children, corduroy is the material they used to use to make trousers back in the day before denim was invented. And it looks really nice in this. It's a cool touch. Quick history lesson. They actually used to use corduroy in the old Porsche 356, the Beetle one that I mentioned earlier on, because apparently the seats gave good ventilation and good grip. Now, I can't speak about the ventilation, even though it does have really good heated seats, but I can speak about the grip. My buttocks aren't moving an inch in this car. That's a good thing. What else shall I show you? Well, I really like the gold 911 emblem on the dashboard, which shows you your chassis number, as well as this perforated roof lining, proper old school, and the general all-round visibility in this car. Because it's got that glass panel, it's so easy to see what's going on behind you. In fact, this might provide the best visibility in any modern sports car. It's really good. 
couple of other minor touches. It's got a green font on the giant rev counter and on the speedo, and also on the chronograph on the dashboard. Plus, if you want to spend even more money, Porsche will also sell you a dedicated watch to match the interior of your Heritage Design Edition 911 Targa 4S. So that's all the Heritage stuff out of the way. What's this car actually like to drive? Underneath, it uses the same engine as a standard 911 Targa 4S. So a three liter, twin turbocharged, flat six, making 450 metric horsepower and 530 newton meters of torque. That might not sound like an awful lot in today's world, but believe me, it's plenty quick. It'll do zero to 62 in 3.8 seconds, the same as the Cabriolet. And if you have a long enough, straight enough, empty enough, legal enough road, and your toupee glue is strong enough, it'll do 189 miles an hour flat out. Acceleration off the line is tremendous as well. It's got so much traction because of that four wheel drive system. As for the gearbox, well, you get a choice of two. This one has the seven speed PDK dual clutch, but it's also available with the option of a six speed manual. I think the manual's definitely the one to go for in the heritage edition, because let's face it, PDKs weren't available in the 50s and 60s. So if you want to keep it authentic, then a stick shift is definitely the way to go. Also, if you're interested in your Heritage Edition appreciating in value over time, then I think the manual is definitely gonna be worth more than the PDK over time. As for the handling, well, it's a Porsche 911, which means it's brilliant. It's so much fun to thread down a back road. The steering is absolutely spot on. Porsche nailed this every single time. There's so much feedback through the steering. You know exactly how much grip is left. It's very direct, very involving. It's a beautiful car to drive fast or slow. But the 911 Targa is inherently flawed and that is because it's heavy, significantly heavier than standard Porsches. It's 40 kilos heavier than the Cabriolet and 110 kilos heavier than the coupe, which means it's just not quite as direct, not quite as agile through the corners. It might not sound like an awful lot, but it's a bit like going everywhere with a really heavy passenger next to you. It just takes a little bit of the shine off. The next thing I wanna talk about is the sound. The engine itself sounds great, but the exhaust isn't loud enough for my tastes. And that's because this Targa has a lot of wind buffeting. You can probably hear it but it's got so much wind noise being made because of this huge aperture in the roof. If you want to get a sense for what it might sound like when you're driving at speed, try winding down one window in your car when you're on the motorway. That's what the Targa sounds like pretty much all the time. If you're the kind of person that likes to drive with the roof down everywhere you go, then you'll either need ear defenders or the Cabriolet version. As for the ride, it's actually pretty decent. The suspension has been recalibrated for the Targa to be ever so slightly softer than the coupe and cabriolet versions, which positions it more as a GT, as a usable everyday car that you can pretty much take anywhere, anytime. The downside of that is that you get quite a lot of head toss in this car, by which I mean my head gets tossed around whenever you encounter uneven road surfaces. I am nitpicking a little bit on that one. It's definitely not the end of the world, but you do notice it on some roads. So, what do I think of the 911 Targa 4S Heritage Design Edition? Well, I like it on the whole. Would I buy it? No, I would not. No, I wouldn't. Even though I think it's a great piece of kit, I just can't justify that extra 27,000 pound price premium. I just go ahead and buy the standard car. Okay, the interior in this one is arguably slightly nicer, but that's subjective. And the exterior of the standard Targa doesn't have those stickers. So for me, the ordinary car in black or guards red with black wheels is the one that I would pick. But having said that, the Heritage Design Edition is a nice little slice of 911 history. And even though it is flawed, I do love a Targa. to say it's the Targa and this is why. <laughs>